ABC4's Elizabeth Hur has been with them the past few days. And Liz, do we know exactly when the Harrisons are going to get there? Well, Terry, I'm hearing sometime between noon and 3 tomorrow. We will find out. In the meantime, take a look at this crowd. You said there was a huge crowd gathered here. I've got to say at least a 1,000 people must be here waiting for the big showdown. And they are going wild right now. And that can only mean the star designers are out greeting their fans. I see Eduardo, Paige, and Michael. They are all designers for this wonderful show. As you can see, the countdown is on. The stage is set for the tomorrow's extreme event. A community celebrates as extreme designers prepare to unveil their masterpiece. I'm just having a ball. I can't wait to see them come home. I can't wait to uh, see the tears of joy that will happen because believe me, when they walk through that front door, they are not going to know what hit them. That house is off the hook. That house now awaits its new owners after undergoing a major facelift and taking in truckloads of new goodies. Being a four and a half day build, it definitely brought on some challenges. The scheduling was, was pretty difficult. You're having people work at 3 a.m. That's when their shifts start. But with determination and devotion, some 1,500 volunteers worked around the clock with one common goal, to show their appreciation to a family who touched so many lives. I actually got to go to San Diego for the day yesterday and see the family. The Harrison family's been sent away to San Diego while the Extreme crew worked their magic. Gordon Harrison said to me, um, he just grabbed me and he said, if I don't get the opportunity to thank you, what this means to us, how it's going to affect our lives, how how amazing it is to be a part of it. And uh, I told him, you know, it's what you do that that's why we're here. So um, what comes around goes around in this world, and he's a true example of that. You are now back looking at a live picture of that huge crowd gathered here. Some have even told me they are staying right put, right where they are, staying overnight to ensure the best seat in the house for the big showdown tomorrow. Bringing this amazing story close to home from Bountiful, I'm Elizabeth Herr, Ruth and Terry, back to you. Well, this is where the two men started out this morning. This is the White Pine Trailhead. They were headed to a remote area south of here called the Pfeiffer Horn Peak, almost near the Utah County border, to do some backcountry skiing. It triggered a massive rescue effort, including Salt Lake County, Utah County, Wasatch Backcountry Rescue, a DPS helicopter, and a life flight helicopter. At around 10 this morning, Dutton called search and rescue from his cell phone. He was bumped and bruised, but that he was doing okay, but that his friend was uh, critically injured and that uh, he was unconscious at that point, but was still breathing. The two men had been swept up in a slide the width of a football field and twice as long. They are actually sitting in the middle of an avalanche. This hiker says he heard the avalanche coming. When I was hiking up, I heard a rumble through the wind. There was uh, high winds, like I said. Uh, those occurred last night, which caused a lot of wind loading of the snow on the ridges. And it looks at this point like that's what broke loose. Those high winds kept helicopters from getting close to the victims. Around 45 mile an hour constant winds gusting up to 70 miles an hour. Ground crews could only be shuttled in two hours away from the injured skiers. But by 2.30, they had reached them, and the winds calmed allowing this life flight helicopter to finally fly in. The two men were plucked off the mountain and flown directly to the hospital, ending a six-hour dangerous rescue. Those men are in the hospital tonight. Joe Bola is in extremely critical condition, and Dutton, we understand, is in serious condition. Close to home in Little Cottonwood Canyon, Buddy Blankenfeld, ABC4 News.